Hey, I'm DMS. You're watching The Headphone Show. Today I'm joined by Sam Goddess. You might have seen her before. She did some cello pieces on the Abyss channel. She's played in orchestras in northern New York, all kinds of other interesting things. But today we wanted to talk about specifically uh, women in audio, because you don't see a lot of women in the hi-fi community, but statistics online show that they are there. So I know your background, but obviously the people watching do not. At least most of them probably don't. So talk to me a little bit about your background in music. So I hold two degrees. I have a master's degree in cello performance from the University of Ottawa. And I also have a bachelor's degree in same thing, cello performance from the Crane School of Music at SUNY Potsdam right here in New York. Um, throughout my like higher education, I mean, I've been super involved in like live performance. Um, I also am a singer songwriter and I have dabbled in countless hours of garage band and logic and just trying to produce my own music and produce my own vision by myself, which is quite difficult at times. So while I was in my undergraduate, I had quite a few opportunities to take electronic music courses uh, with a really cool professor. He's super passionate about electronic music. Um, we would learn things from Fresco Baldi, which is a DAW, to Logic, to Reaper, to Ableton, to just a bunch of things. We would kind of dive into a little bit every every of those DAWs. It's not a common combination. I feel like marrying um, an education in classical with an education in electronic music and DAWs and producing and all that stuff. I mean, I'm sure it does happen, but it's not something that I've heard of a lot. So I feel like that probably to an extent gives you an interesting perspective on music as a whole. Um, because I've, I've seen you producing plenty of times around. I mean, when I first met you, I saw you had um, a pair of headphones they weren't the best headphones ever but you had used the <laughs> eq in your uh daw and logic to um correct for the headphones so you're like okay well i know what this is supposed to sound like and you went and corrected this eq curve in your master channel to compensate for your headphones so you could mix better and i was like well this is literally what people in hi-fi are doing they're trying to eq their headphones so they can you mm. know hear music a certain way to a certain target and you were doing this to essentially save on budgets like well, i don't have to buy an expensive pair of headphones if i can eq my headphones to better mix on them i thought that was really neat uh, granted since then you've upgraded oh yeah uh that pair of headphones was an absolute disaster um let's not talk about that but <laughs> no i it's interesting that you bring that up because i genuinely didn't at that moment in time i didn't it's not that I didn't know about hi-fi, it's that I just didn't really have a drive or like care for it at all. Um, like I said, I knew it existed, but it was never like, I, I don't know, I just like never dove into it. Right. So in that situation, I was just mixing my song in a way in which it sounded good on those headphones without realizing, hey, maybe just like, but like there are better headphones to produce and mix on mm -hmm. like you don't need to do this because then later you know a few months after that i had listened to i don't even know what pair of headphones you just like let me borrow a pair and it sounded mm -hmm. like trash it sounded awful because i had mixed it for that pair of headphones that was like complete disaster so it's it's very interesting i've definitely like have come a long way from that that was about two years ago but that brings up an interesting topic is like, okay, so I have had seven years of higher education in classical music. Yes, I took a few electronic courses, but not once throughout that entire seven years did anyone bring up hi-fi okay. at all. Like, it just was not brought up. Now, perhaps it's my fault. I've thought about this. Like, maybe it's my fault. Maybe I didn't seek it out. I just wasn't interested. I know that my priorities were in different places. They were in well live performance that's literally what the degrees are in live performance like going to performances whether it, i was in them or watching them like when i went home to score study and whatnot i wasn't thinking about the the quality of the audio i mean obviously i know the difference between like airpods and like sennheisers or akgs like i yes that's a clear difference for right. me but like i was so just like all of my focus was on just m learning music, whether that was score study or in the practice room. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have an interest in going home and sitting down and listening to music because that's what I did all day, always. Mm -hmm. 
So that's interesting. It really wasn't until, well, I met you, to be honest, that you introduced me to like audio files and like hi-fi and really quality just audio gear. I didn't, it's not that I, again, didn't know that it existed because I did when I was in college. I had done multiple projects in like recording studios just on campus, off campus. I knew about it, but it was more like I was just excited to be involved. I was excited right. that someone wanted me on their album that I you know, was gonna sing in an album that I was gonna play cello in one. I wasn't so focused on like what equipment am I using? Right. Cause there were engineers there that did that for me. So it's just interesting. I feel like, you know, as if you're not exposed to it. Well, no, I know what you mean, because it's something that people are not regularly exposed to on a daily basis. Right. You're exposed to what's available in Best Buys and Walmarts and the top sellers on Amazon. Right. Um, and now you use, well, you've stolen two pairs of my headphones that you have pretty much claimed as your own. I haven't seen them for <laughs> close to a year I mean, at least. I see them, but. Yeah, they're on your head when I see them. Um, I know you have the AKG K361. Use those a lot. Fantastic. And you stole one of my favorite pairs of Sennheisers. The HD 560S. Yes. Those are so good. I love those. Yeah, you, I know you use those all the time. And I'll get new headphones in. You'll come over and try them on. And if something is just not right, you'll only be like, oh, get these off my head. These are terrible. Which I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same thing. I think you have a faster reaction to it than I am. Yeah. But that's because you're also used to a headphone that's like a very, very flat neutral. Yeah, which is so interesting that I, like I, like you said, like when I listen to other headphones, I immediately am like, this is garbage. It's like, well, okay, not every headphone is tuned the same way that the Sennheisers are. Like, they're right. just not. Well, like, there's other ones too. Like, I, you put on my, maybe, um, yeah. my LCD, my old uh, 2012 LCDs, my favorite ones ever. Yeah, those yeah, ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I was like, these make everybody cry. You're like, they're not going to make me cry. You put them on in like 20 minutes later, you're like, these are pretty good. <laughs> it's like, yeah, these sound okay. Yeah. Like crying. But the 560S is, it's your daily driver. For yeah. Oh yeah. They're fantastic. They're just like so good. I not once like, I feel like a lot of headphones don't fit my head correctly. Just, I don't know. I feel like they either squish my ears too much or I get a hot spot or mm -hmm. I like can't wear them for more than a few hours and like those Sennheisers I can wear for literal hours. To be fair, I also have that problem with most headphones, mm. but I didn't notice it as much until I started wearing really good headphones. And then I was like, wow, everything else is really uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's easy to go to something nicer, but it's really hard to go back to yeah. something else. For sure. Um, and based on that, I don't know, I feel like uh, you know, your perspective, obviously you've tried these kind of things. I don't imagine you'll be going back to your old headphones you had prior to the Sennheisers or the AKGs. I literally threw that pair out. Yeah. <laughs> like I threw it out. It was an old pair. I don't even know what headphone, but it was from my grandfather and my parents just kind of threw them at me and were like, here's headphones. And I was like, those will work. Cool. Just to clarify this too. It's not like, oh, she was passed down a vintage pair of headphones. It wasn't like that. We're talking like airplane headphones kind of situation. <laughs> like so bad. They were fine to be thrown out. It wasn't a loss to the world. So bad. And like the pads start, the material on the pads started crumbling and mm -hmm. I sewed. Your own pads. <laughs> I sewed my own pads over top of that. It was just. Now, to oh. be fair though, also you were, you know, quite literally the definition of starving college student. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I, I did, mean. Well, and I didn't care. I just didn't care about have it, because for me I was also at that point in my life I was finishing my master's degree completely online okay cello performance online mm -hmm. right so it just involved me recording myself playing it back on my mac my macbook and being like good enough send right like I I had no interest in the quality audio I don't know but going off of that I do think it is a little bizarre that classical music or not if you're in school for music, I feel like maybe that's something that at least one professor should mention. Yes. Like, I feel like that's a little bizarre that it wasn't. And like I said, perhaps it's my fault that I didn't seek it out. But I, like, I, I listen to the Sennheisers now and I genuinely think like, wow, I 
this would have made score study significantly more pleasurable and easier to do because you can just hear like everything. The sound staging right. is spectacular on them. And it's just like, wow, like where were these, you know, all seven years of my, my education that just would have made it like a much more pleasurable experience. You know, actually I have two notes on that. Okay. One, I recall you said a lot of listening you did. You think about this. Audiophile, somebody like who's watching myself, when I listen, I go and I sit in front of my speakers and I listen to an album or something like that. Or I put on my headphones, I listen to an album. When you were in college, a lot of listening you did was you would go and listen to a live orchestra or a quartet or something like that. You would oh, listen yeah. to live music in a hall. Um, so you still get that sound quality. You're still getting that very intentional listening time like what myself or a viewer would do, but it was in a live setting very frequently rather than um, you know, in my living room. Because I remember you said yeah. it was very cheap and frequent to have these uh, events at your school. They would happen all the time. Well, yeah, for like, like my undergraduate, so at the Crane School, there were performances, especially in like the middle of the semester and the end of the, the term, there were free performances every single night, if you were a student. Because it'd be like your best friend's recital is that night. Mm -hmm. followed by like snarky puppy was at school are you kidding me like i saw that live there were like just so many different people they're always bringing in different musicians different like guest artists different groups not to mention all of the ensembles not even including all of the chamber music too like it honestly is a point where it's like at every single there's a point in the semester where like every single day you can go see live performances and there were three different halls at my undergraduate and I in my later years I started to appreciate the acoustics of each hall mm. differently and I realized which halls were my favorite for hearing a string recital versus a brass recital versus a full orchestra or a quartet but then like a quartet of saxophones versus a string quartet like and then messing around being like okay you know what for this concert I'm gonna sit back row of the balcony just see how it sounds okay well this right. so this concert i'm going to sit in the sweet spot of our biggest hall which happens to be dead center like mm -hmm. right in the middle of that middle section so it's just interesting and then it also makes me appreciate like going to klein hands now with like seeing the buffalo philharmonic fantastic orchestra joanne folletta is an absolute angel she is mm -hmm. so so wonderful i really look up to her she like that hall klein hands is really great too especially for full orchestra i mean that's what it's for right mm -hmm. so like the times that we've gone you know sitting in the balcony whether it's on the left right middle like you really get a completely different oh yeah different like experience pretty it's a much. really well balanced sound yeah and you've translated that to a lot of the pairs of headphones of mine you've tried you've been like this doesn't sound like i'm sitting in the audience this sounds like i'm sitting on part of the stage or another one you'll be like, this sounds like it's up in the balcony, things like that, just because the different tonalities of them. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I kind of want to wrap back around to, though, is you mentioned maybe, you know, that's something that higher education should mention, at least at some point in music world. Uh, but on the inverse of that, we recently were traveling through northern New York. Mm -hmm. um, you're doing a, a tour up there uh, around the 4th of July. And we stayed with one of the professors. They had a guest room for us. Um, and they taught a class basically on audio physics at this music school. And I'd brought with me some headphones. And we were talking about it. He's like, oh, these are really strange. I was like, yeah, it's a planar magnetic uh, headphone. He's like, you can't put a planar in a headphone. Planars are these giant, massive speakers. Oh, boy. And it's like, but the thing is, is, I think it shows a lot of people just don't know that things like this exist. That's what you know? I mean. I feel like it's a super niche thing it's mm -hmm. a really cool niche thing don't get me wrong especially being like having a musical background i really have an appreciation for it and i do wish that it's something that was brought into my life earlier um yeah i don't know there's definitely something to be said about that though like yeah. why is it not you know something <laughs> that this has made me think about um audio really it's not primarily marketed to women yeah <laughs> but that said i mean even a man teaching music physics didn't know about hi-fi to begin with um which makes me think that yes it's not marketed much towards women we don't see a lot of women in hi-fi but in general hi-fi isn't a very big mass market thing at the moment we're seeing it grow a lot in the um crowd of like pc enthusiasts mm -hmm. people are interested in hardware enthusiasm 
And I think that probably is going to widen the kind of like gender differential because mm. um, there's a lot of women like yourself that have, you know, built a gaming PC. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of just discovery like that, I mean, do you think there's any other particular reasons why we don't see a lot of women in hi-fi? Because I hear people say all the time, oh, my wife hates that I have these big speakers, you know, things like that. Oh, they're just big, ugly speakers in the living room and stuff like that. Now, I know you're an exception to that because you're like, oh, yes, bring out the Magnapans. Let's set them up. Oh, because they're so good. Right. I don't know. I think it kind of comes down to three things, three observations that I've, well, observed <laughs> since, like, being in the audiophile world. Um, only for a little short, like, two years, not even. One we had already talked about, which was exposure, right? If you mm -hmm. don't know somebody in the community or are not seeking it out, you're probably not going to be in it or have a profession in which, you know, hi-fi is important. Um, but I think it kind of definitely, I definitely think it boils down to marketing. I do see a huge influx of influencers trying to create this image of like an it girl or like that girl or being like, the cute girl who's in the park reading with headphones on like mm. it's a huge like aesthetics thing the lo-fi radio girl yeah like yeah high key the lo-fi radio girl yes and like i see a lot of influencers and like pushing this image and every single not every single but a good majority of posts that i've seen from said influencers they're either wearing airpods the airpod the airpod max Oh, the big ones? The big, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. headphones, yeah. yeah. They're wearing the AirPod Max, the AirPods, or they're wearing like colorful Bose headphones. Yeah. And they're just like, these are cool, they're wireless, and they're sound canceling, and they come in purple. Like, okay, that's fine. And like, right. I'm glad that they're getting those, but that's like kind of the only thing that like are being pushed to non-audiophiles mm -hmm. are things that look aesthetically pleasing. Or so things that have bass or wireless or, or whatever. Or things that have bass or are mm -hmm. wireless or are just convenient. And also like price is definitely a huge thing too. You know, like, I don't know. I feel like you're not gonna see high end headphones being worn by someone just like walking around in right. the grocery store, maybe because yeah. they're not for that. But I I've guess... never worn expensive headphones like that to the grocery store. I mean, you could bring like a whole amp and like a deck. I know people who have like, walk around with it. But like while we're kind of on this whole thing of discovery, um, a lot of people get others into this hobby the same way that I got you into it by sharing it, you know, with the people they care about, with their friends and family and whatnot. Um, from a woman's perspective. Do you have any advice for like, let's say there's a guy out there and he wants to share his passion for audio with his lover, you know, with his wife, whatever, that, that they can experience the joys of this together. You know, he's like, wow, I love this so much. I would love for her to experience the same passion that I do for this. And maybe we can then have big speakers in our living room. And that won't work for everybody. But from that perspective of coming into it, I don't know, do you have any input on that or anything that comes to mind? Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind is kind of like a simple thing for me. And maybe that's just, I don't know. I just, if your partner is interested in something, that should interest you, you know? Maybe not always, but like right. when you are excited about something, like I want to know why, you know? And I feel like kind of vice versa. So maybe that's just kind of something that is just simple to me and maybe mm -hmm. not to others. And it is important for people to have their own hobbies. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but I feel like audio, especially speakers in a living room, is something yeah. that's so communal to a household. Yeah. Um, one of the things that came to my mind was, well, maybe don't play her your music, let her listen to her music, first off. That, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Or just be like, hey, this also doubles as like a home theater system. Like right. you can watch whatever you want to watch. I was going to say Gilmore Girls, but like that's a huge stereotype that like all women watch Gilmore Girls and like... So are you saying that you watch Gilmore Girls? No, I don't. I really don't. Or like, that's just the first thing that came to my mind. Like a stereotypical show right. that women watch, which I don't like. I don't like that stereotype. Kardashians. But I, like, I'm just like feeding into that and I apologize to my fellow women. <laughs> I'm embarrassed for myself. There are... The, it's like... 0.2% of this channel's audience are female. Hello, 0.2%. Yeah. <laughs> but there are a lot of statistics that show that much more women are involved on, um, like, forums and things like that, which... Interesting. I wouldn't have guessed that. 
Huh. Uh, it's still a very big discrepancy. Yeah, that's interesting. And it also brings up the question like, okay, well, how do we get more people that are not males right. involved? And honestly, I don't really know what the answer is. Like, like I said, I've just observed that marketing has a huge mm -hmm. thing to do with it, a huge thing to do with it. You know, look at Apple. They have all these different colors. Same with Bose, like all these cute different colors. They're like feeding into this whole like it girl thing to circle right. back around to that. There's an accessibility factor too. I feel like a lot of guys are like gearheads. <laughs> like we like having our collections of wrenches or working on our hobbies and just having lots of like things that we can tangibly hold. We like building things and whatnot. Uh, women do too, to women a certain do extent. Women do too, yeah. It, I think that's another stereotypical guy thing. Yeah, for but, sure. But, you know, a lot of hi-fi, not all hi-fi, a lot of hi-fi does require um, like multi-component setups. I think that also has, you know, to do with the rise of popularity of like wireless headphones and things like that. No one wants to oh, sweet, I'm going to get this expensive pair of headphones, but I can only use them at my desk, and I have to spend another $200 on this box and another 200 on this right. box, plug them together and run that on my computer and route all the audio stuff, and then right. I have to make sure I'm using a high-quality source, and it's, it's a million things you have to put together, um, which is, truth be told, kind of a pain in the ass for anybody. You do it to yourselves. I know. <laughs> and, I, and I think back to, like, my own experience, right? Like, I'm literally a musician, and I'm talking about like exposure to it and it's like well so then how do you get that exposure like if I didn't meet you I probably still no I probably would have come across it down the line the further I got into producing and like mixing and mastering all that stuff how do you expose people to it how, how do you, you expose yeah. people to it how do you even show people that like there is good audio like hi-fi is totally a thing like how right. do you even do that without being like, let's not really use cool headphones. Well, it like, seemed like that was more popular. Uh, we did a video traveling to Germany, mm -hmm. um, which if you want to check that out, link in the video description, Munich High End 2022 is a great event. There was a lot more diversity at that event. Hmm. I mean, it was a very, it was jam-packed. It was, there were still a lot of dudes. <laughs> but <laughs> there was a lot of women at that show as well, more than I had seen at shows in America. And that show was advertised all around Munich. You know, as we were going through the city, you see on billboards pictures of Alan Parsons leaning on a subwoofer, and it'd be high-end Munich in these days and stuff like that. So it was something that's big enough overseas in Europe that it is publicly advertised, that people have an interest in it, just seeing signs and billboards about it. And you really don't see that as much in the United States. Um, the only way, like even people who are in audio already and are into the hobby, people have gotten deep enough that they've like, you know, gotten on forums and things like that and don't know that hi-fi meetups exist. They don't know about can jams or any of those. And to us, to people like myself, I'm like, well, that, those are everywhere. Those happen all the time. But there's people who are already involved in the community that don't know those exist. Hmm. So it's, it has to be an exposure and accessibility thing just across the board, I feel like. Yeah, I definitely think that perhaps America's priorities are just in different places. Like, they're on billboards everywhere over in Germany. Like, where are they in America? Like, right. I don't know. I had, like I said, I had no idea. I When you mentioned Can Jam for the first time, I thought it was that stupid Frisbee game. I yeah. was like, you go and play Cam Jam, like Can Jam, right. and talk about headphones. Like, what is that? The only one that I've like actually heard of was Nam, and that's because the music business mm -hmm. department at Crane would always go to that and would work it too. Yeah. That's the only like audio related event that was ever brought to my attention. Yeah, which it kills me that you had never got to experience Rocky Mountain Audio Fest because I feel like just like all the big rooms with the plain R speakers and all that, mm -hmm. if you love the Magna Pans, you would have just melted yeah. in that space. Um, there are other things like that, and I'm sure that we'll, you know, see more shows like that around, but RMAF will definitely be a missed one. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's not something you really see advertised. You see if it's something advertised here, it's like, you know, bows on a billboard or on an athlete or Beats or AirPods, something like that. And that's really about it over here. Yeah. And like, I guess that makes sense because, you know, Apple seemingly has like endless funds for marketing. Of right. course there's going to be like, you know, billboards, ads everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. 
And they come in your favorite colors. Like, I right. don't know, of course, but. Well, AirPods alone in 2021 sold like, I think it was six times the value of like, I think Spotify, um, Ford, like a whole bunch of other things. Wow. Like car companies and wow. music companies and all, just AirPods alone as a product. Yeah, you know? I believe it. Well, I mean, they know what they're doing over there. Yeah. I mean, they make an they make an audio product that works perfectly with your phone, with your watch, with right. everything. Like with with a product that is used by what thirty to forty percent of the world market. That's crazy. That's uh, that's pretty nuts. And I mean, that in itself, I feel like, is kind of starting to bridge some accessibility into audio. Mm -hmm. Audio has gotten a lot better in the last you know ten years. I mean, like AirPods Pros. It's an AirPod, but. That's a lot better as a singular item than a lot of headphones were, you know, 20 years ago. I'm that sure. cost twice as much. Um, but granted now, the headphones I plug into a DAC amp are on a whole nother level today than they, you know, were mm. then and are definitely a whole nother level compared to things like AirPods. So, who knows, maybe by the time that's popular we'll be beaming music directly into our brains or something. Something. I don't know how it would work. I don't know the logistics here, but... Skip the digital analog conversion. It'd be, di it'd be digital straight to whatever we would call your digital processing in your brain. I guess that's also analog to an extent. I don't know. Analog. You know, I feel like that was a pretty good discussion. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to see a part two to this, you want to see me talk to Sam about more audio-related things, let me know in the comments below. Sam, I hope you enjoyed this industrial looking set while the room is still under construction. Very dramatic lighting and all yeah, that. Yeah, I, I feel at home actually. Yeah? Yeah. I hope our good. home doesn't look like this. No, 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 it doesn't. <laughs> I, no, it, no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, oh. So that is going to wrap this one up. Sam, thank you for joining me. Of Guys, course. if you like this video, leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. Like I said, if you want to see a part two also, you know, in the comments. As always, you can get active at the forums at the link in the video description, and don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till next one. Peace.